Today we're talking about Sub-Zero and how they took one step to strengthen their supply chain. To do that, we're talking with Darren Ruck, Supply Chain Supervisor at Sub-Zero, Wolf and Cove. Darren, how are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. So Darren, Sub-Zero makes high quality kitchen equipment and you have a lot of moving parts in your supply chain. And you recently turned to Fastenal. Why is that? What were you seeing in your supply chain that caused that change? With the pandemic, we saw uh, a significant number of supply chain issues that arose. And uh, Fastenal was my go-to to solve those issues as they came up. So uh, we, we just naturally gravitated towards them as, as uh, they continued to solve problems for us. And implementation isn't just a big word, it's also a big deal. How was the switch over? What was it like working with the Fastenal team? It was great. Uh, they, it was all hands on deck. They brought their trucks in, they brought their people in. I even got involved. I had to make sure that everything was you know, going appropriately and, and going smoothly. And so I just stepped in wherever I could to, to lend a helping hand, but the team was great. Um, they actually had to come in a little early uh, for us uh, as the incumbents left before they were supposed to. So uh, they kind of left us in the lurch, fast and all, stepped up, uh, took charge, and uh, we never missed a beat. When you were considering switching from your incumbent over to supply or over to fast and all, excuse me, uh, was there anything that helped boost your confidence? It was, it was, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It was Grant's go-to attitude. Grant was the, the guy that I always reached out to. He was, he was the one that if I needed something, couldn't have it, couldn't find it, couldn't get it. I went to him and he was kind of my go-to guy. And we had several meetings and several discussions, him and his boss and bosses, uh, we, we talked about the different opportunities that may exist, and it just, they gave me confidence. Now, this next part, you're going to have to stick with me here. There's a point. Stretch <laughs> film and banding. Uh, I was told that stretch film and banding was a problem. It had become a big problem. Uh, what was happening, and how did Fastenal help? Uh, stretch film was a problem. We had, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but we had an issue where we thought we had such a great deal going on that the Fastenal actually my rep jokingly said, you know, if the price is that good and the, and the deal that good, then I'm going to go to them and buy it for Fastenal. So, <laughs> so we had them take a look at it and the, the material ended up, there was no way we were getting the footage. There was no way we were getting the caliber of material. And so there was just an issue with the, with the way they were selling it to us. And we ended up getting the rolls that we got from Fastenal, what they were either two or three times heavier the, the, you could tell the length was substantially more. So there was technically there was a price increase to go with this material, but there was no way we were getting the footage or the caliber that we were supposed to be getting from the incumbent. And then the, the, the strapping was also an issue just with all the supply chain issues. The, there, were, there were times where you couldn't get it anywhere and we were reaching out to three, four, five different places and placing orders just to get something on the books, hoping something would come in. We turned it over to Fast and All, and we haven't had a we haven't had a, an issue since. And I also hear that receiving was a big win. Uh, in our day to day lives, you don't hear that too often unless you're in the NFL. Uh, Darren, can you tell me about your receiving win? Um, our receiving department, especially at Wolf, uh, is just so overwhelmed and burdened with you know all sorts of stuff coming in, going out, and the incumbent. Uh, they relied on our receiving group to uh, bring in all bring in all the equipment um, it was supposed to go into the into our system, uh, taken down to our our stock rooms, and we were having to put all this stuff away and sort through the stuff that was going to the the, the disparate people that were ordering versus um, our stock room. So it was just a lot of hands on from both the receiving department and from our stock room coordinators. Uh, when Fastenal came in, all that changed. Nothing that came in through Fastenal went through a receiving. They picked it up. They delivered it. And I'll just give you a, another wonderful little uh, warm and fuzzy. The, the incumbent would, would grace us with all the packaging materials and throw that in our bins. And then we had to actually throw this stuff away. So it was actually work for our team to go back and clean all that stuff after them. So it was just, it was horrible. So it was one of the first things that I did when I talked to Fast and I said, you know, we would really like it if if it could be a holistic situation where you bring the stuff in and you take care of the garbage as well, you can utilize our, our dumpsters, all that good stuff. It's not that you have to take it away, but you know, we, we just didn't want to be cleaning up after fast and all like we did the incumbent. And we just thought that was a really wonderful change that they made. So streamlined everything. Everybody's happier. 
talking about inventory, reducing on-hand inventory is a big deal. How has Fastenal helped you with that since the implementation? They have really helped us to streamline what we use and then the mins and maxes around that usage. So even, even for the high volume users, they've, they've helped us streamline how much we keep on hand based on monthly averages and they've adjusted the mins and maxes accordingly. But the, I think the thing that helped us the most is they identified the inventory that didn't move. So the items that um, were just stranded on our shelves, but the way we managed them before Fastenal came in, it wasn't really very visible. And so everything went into the to the vending machines and then they had actual tracking, actual usage data that they were able to call and say, you know, we've had this thing, this item's been here for six months and hasn't moved. And so we came up with a plan to obsolete these parts or make them special order items for the for the one or two offs that would could potentially happen in a year or maybe every other year. And so they've really helped us, you know, clean up that inventory and get the stuff that's moving on the shelves, get the stuff that's not moving off the shelves. So Fastenal is now coming in and handling inventory management, filling the vending machines and absorbing a lot of the touches that are just naturally in the supply chain. Really now the only time that somebody on the sub-zero side is touching it is when they need it. Uh, Have you noticed this? Has your team noticed this? Oh, absolutely. Um, Before Fastenal came in, uh, I I kind of alluded to this, but we, the, the way parts were uh, cared for the way they were stored. They were in drawers and bins and very hard to find uh, these items. And now with the vending machines, they're completely visible. They're lit. You can see everything. People can find stuff. They've got the product locator. So there's just all kinds of opportunities there for the team to find items that before they'd go to the coordinator and say, you know, we've got this issue. We're looking for this widget. And it was up to us to try to figure out where this widget was and just, just not a good solution. So this is much better. So there's been some positive news out of this, it sounds like. Is this just contained to your team or was there a ripple effect? I heard you mention Wolf before. I believe that's a division of Sub-Zero. Did they get a boost as well? Yeah, we, we've got stock rooms in each of our three primary uh, locations, the, the manufacturing locations. We've got a, a Sub-Zero in Fitchburg, a Wolf in Fitchburg, and then another Sub-Zero in uh, Goodyear, Arizona. So we've got stock groups in each of those locations and Fastenal is an integral part of managing the MRO stock in each of those three locations. In each case, is that a separate on-site? Yes. Well, the, I guess technically yes, technically no. So Goodyear has a whole different setup than the Wisconsin program does, but uh, Vito and, and David primarily handle uh, the whole Madison Fitchburg campus. Gotcha. Okay. Last question here, Darren. What are you able to do now that you couldn't do before Fastenal was brought in? I already alluded to it a little bit, but finding those those miscellaneous items was a, a really big driver for me. Uh, like I said, the incumbent, they had stuff uh, spattered and smattered all over the, the different place, all the different locations, and it was really tough to find things. It was tough to know what we had in stock what was available. And when we would fill in, when Brock or I would fill in in the stock room when a coordinator was out, it was just very difficult to find this stuff. So the product locator, the the vending machines, all the visibility, we know where stuff is at. We can find it. We can look it up in the product locator. There's just, there's access and there's tools to find things that we just didn't have before where my only other option would be to call the person and say, where, where is this item? Do you, do you know? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, it was, it was just a... It's a much better situation. We we look like we're on top of our game much better now as well. So, Well, Darren, I have taken enough of your time. Thanks for talking today. Thank you. 